Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our celebration of the Holy Mass of the Lord's Supper. And uh, today we have symbols that are representing uh, the uh, mysteries that we are about to celebrate today. Uh, sorry for the technical difficulty and the delay, but uh, always um, the Lord is always with us. So I'm asking God to help provided us with a little bit of time to relax a little bit and think about uh, the beauty of these holy rituals. And so we begin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the union of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We also have assistance from our choir today uh, with uh, some of the songs that they sent me, and the church is actually licensed to use these songs using for the liturgy, and it's a great time. Uh, opportunity for us today to join in you know the song more importantly today we can sing to the Lord Church, he sacrificed you for all eternity 
the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, shall stand. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel. On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and share in the lamb, in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. Then take some of the blood and apply it to the two doorposts of the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat of its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are, Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our, our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up in the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your hand, who have loosed my bonds. Our blessing Blessed cup come is a communion with the blood of Christ. Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blood union with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord 
until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, o Lord. Before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around, uh, around his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has faith has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So, when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at the table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that, as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry again for the technical difficulty earlier. We wanted you to see the span of the church in using one device, uh, but did not work. And so we are left with this one, but at least one device is working. Um, and so I'm not sure if you can see uh, the beautiful symbols that uh, Sarah and Eladio prepared for us um, in celebrating this Last Supper. And I know that if you can see this bread right here, uh, actually Eladio, went in line at the store to buy the bread so we can have it here. So thank you, we love you. And also Sarah had a, um, uh, the stole of the priest, which we um, celebrate today, which is the, uh, the renewal of vows of priests, but also the um, traditional um, bowl and water and a towel that we use 
um, during this Mass uh, to wash the feet, uh, to reenact the washing of the feet of the Apostles. Uh, beautiful symbols, really, that lead us to the mysteries uh, that we celebrate today, first and foremost, the institution of the Eucharist, um, not only that, um, the institution of the priesthood um, to help us um, make perpetualize the Eucharist, but also the washing of the feet. And that's the theme, those are the themes of, of our celebration today. Um, during the Triduum, we call it the Triduum because the great three days of the Paschal Mystery of the Suffering, uh, Death and Resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, that's what um, this is the summit of everything that we do as uh, Christians. There are many elements that are going to be present in the celebration that we have. Today, being Holy Thursday, we remember first and foremost, as I have mentioned, the institution of the Eucharist, the center of our worship of God. With the most holy body and blood of Christ, from ordinary bread and ordinary wine are transformed into his real body and blood. Right here on the altar of sacrifice, the altar of memorial, the altar of forgiveness. Perfectly expressed in the words of consecration. But before I do that, I know, I'm not sure if you've seen it, I know uh, Deacon mentioned it the other day. Uh, when he did the preaching and mentioned that we have the uh, image of our Last Supper from the lower altar and the high altar. But there's only another one that you probably uh, can't see very clearly because it's a smaller version of it, but it's on the base of a chalice that was given to me 25 and a half years ago when I was ordained a priest, given by a dear friend, Lulu, a gift for my ordination. This is the altar, as I have mentioned, the altar of sacrifice, the altar of memorial, and to any Catholic church, you will see that the most prominent, the most prominent sacred furniture is the altar. And as I have said, Everything that we just talked about, about the mystery of Christ, the luminous mysteries expressed in the consecration that we hear during Mass. Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you. And yes, a memorial altar, but not a memory where we celebrate our birthdays. It's a memory where truly the Eucharist is yesterday, today, and tomorrow, because Christ is not bound by time and space or limited by time and space, is the only perfect offering yesterday, today, and tomorrow, perpetually, to God the Father, as Jesus has instituted it for all time, to be His real presence to us. His choice, not us. God's will, not our will. And as I've said, Jesus is not bound by time and space, and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, He is made present to us in the form of bread and wine as He has chosen those elements. By His grace, He also instituted the priestly ordained ministry for the service of God and God's people. I received so many greetings in Father Sudakar as well received many greetings uh, because today is considered um, Priest Day. Happy Priest Day. I've received a lot of greetings about it. As today is traditionally the day we renew our commitment to priestly vows. Um, uh, the Chrism Mass, but we already had the Chrism last week, done by the Bishop virtually, and for the Church to commemorate the institution of the priestly not just for us, 
but the entire church as a gift to the church. Je Jesus did so because the Eucharist could be available for all people, for all generation, again as He willed, not I will, or Father Sudakar will, or the church will. It was God's will. Lastly, today also is a call to Christian service and love. As we heard from the Gospel, Jesus reminded us of that great love. To love God in all our hearts, with all our minds, and with all our souls, and to love others as Christ has loved us. That's a commandment. It was not an invitation at all. And a commandment to authentic love of God and neighbor. Then He showed us how to do that. He gave us the model or example of how to do it. What did He do? He knelt before His disciples and washed their feet. For a God, for a divine master, to stoop down to the level of a servant's feet, that is true humility. Then he said, as I have done, you must also do. That's the true mark of a Christian. A Christian is not a step up into a position, as I have mentioned many, many times, Christianity is about stepping down into service of others. The true mark of Christian leadership and service is humility. By washing other people's feet with compassion, with sincerity, and with dedication. And remember, all this that we what He would do tomorrow on the cross, and that He would do the day after through His resurrection. Because whatever we do, if we don't have those, they're meaningless. These three days, one complete long day of showing unconditional love for us. So let me end with this. That's a truly beautiful lesson for us. A popular line from Mother Teresa of Calcutta. We cannot all do great things, but we can do small things with great love. And as we are not able to wash each other's feet, or the pastor, of course, cannot wash the feet of the disciples. Um, we are going to wash each other's feet by praying for each other and for all our needs. For the church, that the symbol of the washing of the feet, she will remain faithful to Christ's sacrificial self-giving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That on this night in which the Lord establishes the priesthood, all priests will recommit themselves to holiness with renewed zeal. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our prayer. That the power of the Holy Eucharist will transform the hearts of all people so that they will recognize Christ as the summit of their life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the event of Christ's passion will generate lasting peace to the world. We pray to the Lord, Lord that all those who suffer, especially those in this time of social isolation with the coronavirus, will, will find consolation in their conformity to Christ crucified. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God, our loving Father, we thank you for the gift of the Eucharist to be your Son's presence in our world. We thank you for the gift of priesthood. More importantly, we ask you today to guide us and to inspire us to serve others by washing their feet as Jesus has done. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to my knee, Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name and the growth of the Lord's whole church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For when the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be just. Where to give you Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat this flesh, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him our glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth Remember, Lord, your servants. And all of us gathered here whose faith and devotion are done to you, we offer you the sacrifice of for the redemption of their souls in hope of hell and well-being, and made their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious Ever to Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, our spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Six, Cyprian, Lawrence, Christodomus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood, for his disciples to celebrate, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal domination and counted among the flock of those we have proven. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, and to bless and acknowledge and approve these offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Lord. 
day before he was to suffer, for our salvation and salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy hands, and once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, All of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the dear one eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as much as you are pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation of the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us all, your servants, who, who go sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share, and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. To the John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, St. Francis Solano, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits. Christ our Lord. You continue to make all these good things to our Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant these in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Of you stay. And now, if you have prepared bread, I will be blessing the bread um, that you have, virtually, of course. Um, and if any food that you would like, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, Eternal God, worthily bless the bread our families have prepared around the world and in our community that we offer you. 
You sent to us your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of angels, to be our living bread for everlasting life through the Holy Spirit. Give spiritual blessing to those who will eat this food. May they have health of body and soul and mind and against all disease and against all other infirmities and calamities. Bless those who are hungry and provide for those who need assistance of any kind, especially at this moment in our lives, by inspiring people to help them with compassion and mercy. Jesus Christ, your Son, the living bread that came down from heaven and gives life and salvation to the world, who lives and reigns with you, Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, we will have, um, as uh, the tradition in our church, we usually strip the altar and clear everything else um, and uh, to prepare the, the Blessed Sacrament for transfer, but that's not going to happen this time. Uh, what we're going to do is we will have a brief adoration. Dr. Dakar will expose the sacrament. We will endure the sacrament for a few minutes, and then after that, we will have a benefit. Benediction in our tabernacle, and usually at the end of the liturgy, as I've said, it's a long liturgy. Um, there is no dismissal, we depart in silence.
We have given them bread from heaven. Having with it in all sweetness. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we have given and offer you something in the sacrament of your body and bread. Help us to experience the salvation you want for us with the peace of the kingdom. Where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Ah.